All right, here goes a quick little uh, lesson on relations and functions. Uh, vocabulary for today is relation. Relation is a mapping of inputs and outputs. Okay, uh, kind of like a little relation machine. You put something in, you get something out. An input is your domain. It's the independent variable which we will most commonly use as x. Output is your range, your dependent variable, because it depends on what you put into the relation or the function. That's most likely going to be y. Now, a relation is a function if and only if exactly one output for each input exists. That kind of means, uh, think of like a uh, pop machine is a function. If you went in, put in your dollar, you press Pepsi, you get a Pepsi. You go back, you put in a dollar, you press Pepsi, you get a Pepsi. What if you went in, you put in a dollar, you press Pepsi, and you got a Mountain Dew? That's, that's not supposed to happen. A function is supposed to have one output for every input, and that's it. So, there's a couple of different ways we can look at functions. Um, we've got uh, functions by mapping. Mapping is kind of like where you just take your inputs and your outputs and you list them and you just draw arrows to each one. Um, and another thing we can do are tables. You've seen T tables before, X, Y tables, input, output tables. Um, they're pretty much the same thing except for a mapping. We just draw arrows. Uh, tables, we actually just list the ordered pairs or the coordinates. So the first function, uh, it says, is the, or basically, are these functions? So we look at this input, and we plug in 1, and we get 3. Okay, no problem. We plug in 2, we get 6. That's fine. We plug in 3, we get 6. That's also fine. We plug in 4, we get 9. There's no issues. So this one is a function. Okay, it's, it's okay that 2 gave us 6 and 3 gave us 6. That's fine. We have an issue when we look at this second mapping, and we see you plug in negative 3, you get 1. Then you plug in 1 and like, oh, you know what, sometimes I'm going to give you 2, sometimes I'm going to give you 4. That's when you have your issue. So this right here makes this mapping not a function. Okay, it's kind of like that thing I told you. You go in, you put in a dollar, you get a Pepsi. You go in, you put in a dollar, you get a Mountain Dew. You go in, you put in a dollar, you get a Pepsi. You're not supposed to get different things each time you press a button. Okay, so kind of like this. Every time you plug in one, you're supposed to get two or four. Not, it's not supposed to change. You're only supposed to get one of them. Okay, so now let's look at the tables. Um, we get two gives us four, three gives us six, four gives us eight, five gives us ten. Yep, that's not a problem at all. This is a function. Uh, two gives us four, three gives us six, three gives us seven. Wait a second, I thought three is supposed to give us six. So no, this is not a function. Now let's look at the last one. Two gives us four, three gives us six. Hey, three, hey, look, it gives me six again. And then four gives us eight. So yes, this is. Okay, so remember, each input is only allowed to have one output. So every time you plug in three, you better get six for these last two examples here. Okay? Graphs, vertical line tests. Is the relation a function? So remember, each input, x, is only supposed to give you one output, y. So how can you tell if a graph is a function? With the vertical line test. All you have to do is draw vertical lines left to right, and it better only touch the graph once. So this touches the graph one time every time, so yes. So let's draw a vertical line test over here. Look, it touches it one time, but look what happens once you get further. Okay, this one touches it twice. This one touches it twice. That means that x equals, let's pretend that's 1, you might get 5, or negative 5, or 5. It's not supposed to give you two different options. Each input is only supposed to give you one option. So this is no. It failed the vertical line test. It only will touch it once if it's a function. So why don't you go ahead Take a few seconds to try the last three on your own. Press pause. Press play when you're ready. Let's go. Vertical lines. Only one time. So this one you should have said yes. This one looks like it's yes, but look what happens when you get to the vertical line. It touches it an infinite number of times. So this one is no. And this one we're going to do it and it's all sorts of crazy bendy, but it only touches once. So this one is a function. Okay, so quick little review. Graph, y, um, 
is equal to 2x plus 1. So that's, uh, that's a function. So we just do a quick little sketch. What is 2x plus 1 supposed to look like? Well, we start at our plus 1 for our y-intercept, go up 2 over 1, and look, y equals 2x plus 1 is a function, okay? Now, last two examples are domain and range, something you should have talked about a long time ago. Remember, domain is also known as your independent variable, which is your x values, and your range is your y values, your dependent variable. So f of x, this is just called function notation. Uh, f of x is pretty much the same as y. It's just called function notation. So f of x is equal to the square root of x. What's our domain? Well, the easiest way to think about domain is to think about what you can't have for x. So let's think. Are you allowed to take the square root of a positive number? Yes. Can you take the square root of 0? Yes. Can you take the square root of a negative? No. So our domain is x has to be greater than or equal to 0. That's your domain. Now let's think about range. Uh, what is the square root of 36? 6. What's the square root of 0? Zero? 0. Is the square root of 100 negative 10? No, it's 10. So y is going to be greater than or equal to 0 as well. Okay, let's, uh, let's try this next one. Think about it for a second on your own. The function of x is equal to 1 over x minus 3. So we don't have to think about positives and negatives, but what do you have to think about when you're dividing? What is x never allowed to be in this particular example? You're right. x is not allowed to be 3 because you cannot divide by 0. So it's not 0. x is allowed to be 0 because that would just be 1 over uh, negative 3. But if x equals 3, then we have 1 over 3 minus 3, which is 1 over 0, which we know is undefined because you cannot divide by 0. So your domain is all real numbers except for x cannot equal 3. So the proper way to write this would be all real numbers except x cannot equal 3. So what's our range going to be? Well, we can divide um, at 1 by any number except for, obviously, what we said, 0. So our range is going to be any real number except for y will not equal 0. Because can you divide 1 by any number to get you 0? No, you can't. Okay, so that concludes our little quick lesson on relations and functions. We are going to be going a lot deeper with these in the next few days. So hold on. If you have any questions, you know where to find me.